Hey guys, before I start this review, I just wanted to let you know I have no affiliation with any Chinese diesel heaters. Um, not sponsored. I bought this with my own money, trial and error, and uh, stay tuned, we'll show you what happens. Now that said, if this uh, guy who sold me this one is watching and you'd like to have a collaboration, please email me. Let's talk. You have a good product. Thanks, man. I have an audience today. Okay, guys, this is the unboxing of Chinese diesel heater. I ordered it through Amazon, and I will put the link of the actual um, reseller on down below here so you can find it. So let's see what's going on here. I'm going to be using this mostly for ice fishing. So, um, it's going to be one of the few that I've seen the actual review on it for ice fishing. It was well boxed. It wasn't a cheap box, which is great. And what do we got first going on here? So, we got the vent pipe. It's a little bit of ding, but it's soft aluminum, so no big deal. Got the exhaust. It's going to be in good condition. No worries there. This looks like it's upside down, so let's flip this over. Get it out this way. Ta da! Let's see the manual. Everybody says that they can't read. Hey, good manual. English? All English. What? This has a fantastic manual. I might have got lucky or they're starting to improve. That's actually into color pictures. Great. Looking forward to that. We got here a little silencer and some clamps. Good. And the muffler and some mounting brackets. Now people are saying this muffler leaks. And it does indeed. So I'll have to, uh, not that it matters, it's going to be outside. I don't know why they were concerned about the inside, but there's the muffler. Nice. Some more hose. I'm not sure what that is going to be for. And the unit itself. Look at that. Nice foam packaging. It's great. And a good length for the battery run. Got the remote control in the front. And the key fob. So I can turn this on and off from the tent. Some people I read didn't come with a tank, so that's a little, a little bit of a worry. So let's see what is the inside of this bad boy. I bought the all in one unit because I was going to build, build this out, but I thought for the extra, I think it was $80 for the case already in the whole unit. Um, why, why bother? The tank is smaller, but this size tank should give me about 40 hours of heat. So that's pretty good. And no big deal to refill in the middle of the day. The pump is already installed and it's actually got a cushion, a shock absorber on there to eliminate some of the ticking sound. The heater looks to be in great condition. There's no dents. Have a look at the other side. That's it. I'll get some close ups of this for you guys. And I will do obviously the first run up right after this video. And we will give it a test run. So I'm excited about that. So stay tuned for that and we'll uh, do some close ups. <clears throat> So heater unit down there. And the tank, let's get a close up of the there's the control unit. The output and the fob. It's an interesting looking fob. 
interesting looking box. And some of the parts right there. Let's have a look at this. Lucked out with the manual. All about the part. Even, even some uh, instructions if you're going to be installing that right into a camper. That's great. Let's have a look at the bottom of this. So, sorry about that. So there's your fuel line in. There's the air in, and the exhaust out. Okay, guys. Here's the. Chinese diesel heater. Pretty excited to get this started. I did a prime um, outside when I filled it up. So I filled it up with fuel and I did a quick prime which allowed the, uh, which was a one touch start up and it just went through its startup cycle and then got to where it was about to fire. So now I'm just gonna press this button here once and we'll see what we got here. Yeah, what she said. Um, very important point. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea what she said. I did Google Translate this earlier, and it's basically just um, welcome to the air heater control or diesel heater um, press start or whatever. Uh, or starting up. So anyway, it's gonna run through this cooling sequence for about 45 seconds before the pump kicks on. And then the pump will kick on and it won't take long for heat. So there's, we're blowing some air in here right now. And uh, meanwhile, the glow plugs are heating up. And then uh, once they come up to temperature, I can see there's a draw on my charger. So it's definitely, definitely um, glow plugs are on. I have my battery charger to a battery, which you can't see because this is such a tight zoom area in my greenhouse here. But I have, uh, I have, I will show it to you. I took a video of it on the side. And, oh, here we go. Should start pumping here any second. Hopefully, any second. Come on, baby, you got this. So, so far from all the stuff that I've watched on YouTube, this is the easiest controller I have seen. There is only one other video on this. Um, the fellow has this. Let's wait for this car to go by. I'm gonna get on my greenhouse, I'm right by the road. Yeah, so what I was saying, a one-touch operation. So you press it once, you can control the actual heat by just turning the dial, and that's it. We should get a pump here any second. Should have been already, I think. Pretty close. It's weird. We're coming up to a minute here. Come on, pump. There's the pump. I can hear the flame. There's an ignition. Definitely like a small jet engine. Wonder if I can video that sound. Let's see. Jet engine. getting warm air already <laughs> that's fast like I'm gonna set a timer here so I can keep track of actual time I'll put on a stopwatch okay I got a stopwatch starting now basically it's kicking on now so but I have warm air already 
Now it's going to go into its boot sequence, which is still going to go up to 10. It's going to get up to uh, an efficient heating temperature, and then it'll back down to the one, and then there's, there's no smoke coming out of the exhaust at all. Yeah, there's no, there's no smoke coming out of the exhaust, so that's pretty cool. So it didn't smoke out like a, like a diesel truck when it starts. I don't know if you'll be able to hear me over this fan. It's definitely picking up. We're at 44 seconds, and this is super warm on my hands already. Super warm. Once this starts up and is running, I'm going to go get a temperature probe and I'm going to do a check on the output temperatures. We're at one minute and this is definitely nice and warm. It's about zero in here right now, so it's kind of cold. Okay, now it's back down to the one. That's what I had said it at, so now we're going to we're going to run at the one level for the test. The pump slowed down. I can hear it definitely is more like a heartbeat now. Walking, walking heartbeat. I'm excited to do that. Wow, it's getting quite warm. I'm excited to do this test out in the tent. We're gonna do a camp out and uh, tomorrow night, and we're gonna it's supposed to be about minus three to minus five. It'll be a good test. My daughter and I are gonna camp out in there, plug it right into the Eskimo insulated tent, and we'll get some temperatures out of that. That's what I'm really interested in this for. I don't want to have that carbon monoxide poisoning chance or a fire, a tent on fire anymore. I'm going to have this outside with an extension hose coming into the tent. No combustion near my tent whatsoever. Now this is quite, I mean it, it sounds quite loud from where I'm standing. Let's just get a little closer. I mean, it's noisy inside here, so it'd be, well, I wouldn't say noisy, but it's reasonably noisy, so I'll be good to see a test outside the tent and see what kind of noise we have, but right now, this thing is pumping out wicked heat, and we're not even up to the three minute mark, so three minutes, I will stop this test, and then I'm going to go get some heat probes, and then we will do a an even better test. I got a temperature probe right here on the better register anything. Let's see here. I'm not sure it is. Let's see. Here. That's up to it's passing a hundred right now. And I know it's getting hot because I'm getting to the point where I can't put my hand on it. So we're at 120, 130. It's slowing down at around 140 right now. That's three minutes and 20 seconds. We got 140 degrees coming out of here. That's pretty. That's pretty amazing. I would not think that this is noisy. And besides, like I said, it's going to be outside. There'll be snow muffling the sound. And really, I think that the main sound is coming from the back and the intake so if you had that outside pointing away you wouldn't have all this reflection sound so so it's definitely going to be quieter i'm positive of that okay what do we got here 160 output temperature 160 degrees in four minutes on level one man that's incredible i am super stoked with how easy this was to set up. Like it took me two minutes to put the piping on here, a couple seconds to put the fuel in, and one push to start this. This is, this is exciting, very exciting. Now it's getting actually quite hot. What do we got here now? 165. Now I can't hold my hand real close here for very long. Like it's, that gets hot, so. And imagine that it's going to make a big difference inside the tent, depending on how cold it is. Minus 20, this might not be enough to warm your tent up. You might want to set it up a couple degrees or a couple settings. Turning it up also not only increases the pump rate, 
uh, the frequency and uh, increases the heat, but it actually increases the blower. So you can blow heat further. So here, I'll just turn it up to like three here or four. No, three. Now you can hear the pump. Oops, I think it just blew, blew this out of there. It's, it's faster now. So it's definitely a faster. Okay, we're running at uh, five minutes and 40 seconds. I put it up to setting three. And we'll see where that goes. Now, one thing to note that I don't know enough about this controller yet. This is a very new one on the market. Whether it has the low voltage battery shutdown. It's wicked important that you have enough battery for this to go down for its cooling cycle. Otherwise, you can damage the actual um, the, the firing chamber. Because it gets so hot, it needs to be cooled. So when this, when you push this button to shut it off, the flame starts or stops, the pump stops, but the the, the blower will keep going until the temperature sensor says it's it's cool enough to shut down. And from what I read, if if you shut it down prior to, okay, this is getting way hot. If you shut it down because of a dead battery and it doesn't have enough to cool it down, you'll actually damage the housing. So, okay, we are at, looks like we're passing 175, 180. It's starting now to get quite a bit hotter. And it's blowing harder. So this might be a good setting for for uh, ice ice fishing. What I'm interested to see is because a Mr. Heater Buddy sits in one spot and you got a super hot area in one area, but the other guy on the other side of the tent is freezing to death. It's 200 degrees at the top and it's freezing on the on the bottom. If this airflow is going to make a difference around the tent. Oh yeah, here we go. Where, what is that? It's 185. Seven minutes and 33 seconds in, we're 185 degrees. It's working great. It's reasonably quiet. Oh, I know it's noisy inside. I know I'm getting reflection from the window. But that's uh, that's pretty sweet, the amount of heat it's getting. So now just to finish this test, ow. Now just to finish this test, I'm gonna do a one touch turn off and we'll see it go through its shutdown. Yeah, what she said. Now we're at eight minutes, and I've started this the shutdown sequence, and it may take a while because this is hot. Okay, the pump has ceased, so that only took 10 seconds, and the blower is dropping, as you can hear. Wow, that is hot air coming over there. That is so hot. So now the blower is on low. You can barely hear it, but it's blowing pretty good. And I imagine it's going to blow for, oh, probably a few minutes. Because that's hot. It's going to take a while for that to cool down. So I'll come back to you and tell you the time. It's now 8.46. Okay, we're 10 minutes and 30 seconds in. Uh, there's still warm air coming out of this. But it's, um, it's probably going to shut down pretty quick here because it's not that hot. But um, yeah, this is impressive. For the price of this heater, um, I, it's a no brainer. Now you can use, I'm not gonna do any videos or any battery draws. I know people are gonna ask. There's a ton of videos out there. I've looked at them about how long a battery lasts. Um, any decent car battery will get you a full day, no problem, and some of the next day. Um, a decent lithium will get you a couple days for sure, but those are pricey. Um, I hummed and hawed about this for a while, but I'm actually picking up a small generator because of the show. I need to charge a lot of batteries at night, so I'm going to just run the generator at night, put on these clips, and um, charge some of my camera stuff and charge this battery back up. So, this isn't a concern for me, and it's really nothing extra for me to take except that charger. Uh, because now I don't have to take my big heater buddy 
and I don't have to take a 30 pound uh, propane tank for the weekend. Um, we'll do a fuel consumption test out on two different levels tomorrow um, when we camp overnight. Um, that to me is more important really than the battery draw because it's not, like I said, it's not really a concern, but you can definitely, if you're going out for a day, do it on a battery. Um, I've seen quite a few different tests. Okay, that's 12 minutes and 17 seconds. The fan is shut off. And so that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Whatever she said sounded important. So that's four minutes it took um, for the cool down, which is no big deal. But you definitely need to have enough battery for the shutdown. Now, I don't imagine that takes a lot of battery um, because it's just a small fan that's blowing. But it's super important that you do that. So anyway, um, there's the startup, there's the quick test, and I am going to show you next the actual real life test that I'm more interested in, in the tent tomorrow night. So until then, stay tuned. Okay, it's, I think it's around 6.30. I have the heater hooked up. I've just modified it slightly. I just put a, instead of it running under my tent, I just ran a, I got a piece of rubber. Um, it's used for making gaskets. And I put some Velcro on it just to replace the window hole. And uh, it's quite breezy out here. It's down to zero now. It's going to be minus uh, three. Feels like minus seven tonight. So, okay, it is spring, but it's still winter. So, it's a good night to be testing this. So, I'm going to go inside and test the sound and see how it sounds. I've had it running for 10 minutes. Um, I should put a mark on the fuel just before I go in to bed so we can gauge what it's going to use overnight. Okay, there's the inside. Um, it's blowing <laughs> really hot air in here. So um, my daughter's uh, gonna be camping in here tonight with me. She may wanna turn around and face the other way. I think I might too, so. Um, okay, so this has been running, I can say five minutes. And that's showing outside at just below zero and Against the tent, it's 12.6. But to be fair, I'm gonna hang that up here. Just, that's like not the best place for temperature. All the way to the other side, although it'd be pretty fair to say that it's temperature there, but it's touching the outside of the tent. So I'm gonna bring that inside and hang it just here and we'll see what happens. Now here's the silent test, ready? You can definitely hear the blower. It's no more than your furnace in the house, and I can hear the ticking outside. I just wonder how it'll be for when I'm doing my videos. I can move that further away, for sure. Um, I don't think I can do anything about the sound of the, the furnace. I mean, that's, that's what it sounds like when a blower's on in your house. So we're all ready to go. It's 21, ordering 22 degrees in here. It's uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, and the heater is still pumping out hot air. It was absolutely perfect in here. Okay, I'm trying to level that 
tank off. Okay, it's been 13 hours, 13 and a half hours, and I've just used half a tank of gas. So, there's my line from last night. Started at 8 p.m. It's now 20 after 9. So, this thing is definitely easy on gas or diesel. So that's 2.5 liters for 13 and a half hours. That's pretty darn amazing. So it'll probably run you about five liters for every 24-ish on low. If it gets colder, of course, um, you're gonna use more. I'm, I'm gonna do another test with, uh, it turned up a little higher here um, for the next hour and just see how much fuel it uses. And uh, I'll get back to you on that. Thanks for watching. Okay, it's 10.40. I put a mark here. I'm gonna run this at half, so 50% level five. I'm sure it'll be like 28 or 30 degrees in the tent. Um, it's still pretty cold out, I'm in the shade. So it'll give me a good test of how much fuel we're gonna use in one hour on level five. And then I'm gonna go in and check the temperature. Stay tuned, we'll check it out. Okay, we're 35 minutes into the test. At Oh my god, it's hot in here. Okay, look, look. Ugh. If you like it hot, that's that's a number five setting, and it is hot in here. Oh, gross. I just noticed that half my video was missing my face, which I mean isn't important in this demo, but it looked cheesy and shitty. So here it is. Um, so I just want to go over again quickly. The one thing, the huge thing that I noticed about this diesel heater as opposed to um, a heater body or another um, flame source um, inside is that inside the tent, there was no hot spot up here. I, I, there was no need to put the fan on last night. And normally you'd have to put the fan on because when you stand up, you'd be like 600 degrees here and like minus two on the floor. The entire tent, all the way over to the, the far wall, down on the floor, um, side to side was all virtually the same temperature except for right where the vent um, where the vent came in other than that I mean it was hot here obviously but everywhere else was equal temperatures and dry and that's a huge win um, having that kind of a um, ambient temperature all the way around is going to be huge and <clears throat> I know that it was 40 degrees in here on on the number five setting which is halfway is hot but let's let's assume that it's minus 25 or minus 30 on the ice this tent will cool down and change the temperature quicker but um i still don't think you'd need it to be at a level five and some of the people i've been talking to said it's already too hot and you have to open the windows the temperature i found in here last night um was averaging between 18 and 19 degrees um, throughout the night and it was all the way around. Like I was actually able to sleep with most of the sleeping bag kicked off and we were in minus five, minus seven outside last night. So it was, um, it was incredible. And um, one of the big bonuses is that the combustion isn't inside. So it actually freed up a big corner in my tent where I don't have to keep everything away from. So it actually added space to my tent big time. And I didn't have to worry about um, dying of carbon monoxide poisoning and or, um, waking up with my pillow falling on it and um, you know bursting into flames so two bonuses things aren't going to burst in the flames in your tent and you're not going to die of carbon monoxide poisoning those are huge wins and we had a friend um, this year die on the ice with carbon monoxide poisoning and um, actually there was two I didn't know the other fellow but there was two um, uh, ice fishermen that uh, died went to sleep didn't wake up and um, that's not cool and that was it. Um, even though I took really good care of my Mr. Heater Buddy, there's still a chance that it could be faulty and, and give off lots of carbon monoxide. Now that's not to say I didn't sleep with a carbon monoxide detector in here last night just for funsicles, because I like to be safe and I had my daughter with me. So last thing I want to do is, you know, is um, be that guy, that dad who kills their kid that way. So anyway, uh, there's the diesel heater again. And um, all I can say is, what do you got to lose? It's only a couple hundred bucks and the heat is going to be way better for you. And in six months from now, I'm going to come back on. I'm going to have this on the ice and I'm going to be doing some 
some actual real-time reviews, but I promise after the testing and I put it through, um, buy it from a reputable um, Amazon dealer and you got nothing to lose. They'll take it back if you're, you know, if you're not satisfied or if you happen to get a, you know, I've seen online people getting some broken ones or whatever, but I mean, that's, that's what you get from, from all the shipping that's going on these days. So um, mine happened to be a good one. I'm loving it so far. Every test was amazing. And the amount of fuel it used in one hour on halfway, I would say you'd still get 20 hours um, on, a, on a tank at that temperature, which is more than enough for you to fill before you go to bed or fill first thing in the morning to keep your, your, your stuff. Now, again, I didn't do any um, battery reviews or any um, amperage draws, and there's so many of them on the online right now so I'm not going to bother jumping over somebody else's toes if you want to find out more about the draw on the battery um, check it out there's a lot of a lot of um, videos right now currently so anyway I will see you guys again on the ice thanks for watching um, take the time to subscribe um, to the channel there will be more of this uh, kind of testing for ice fishing coming up and uh, hit the bell up top if you want to be notified when there's more new videos coming out and we'll be doing lots of new ice fishing videos and lots of fishing videos throughout the summer. So anyway, you guys have a great season. Thanks for hanging out and we'll talk to you soon. I'm Scott from Realistic Outdoors. Thanks very much.